context this morning, we're continuing on in 1 Peter chapter 3. And if you remember, he's coming out of these three sections where, or three illustrations where he tells us as Christ followers, as disciples of Jesus, that we're to be submissive to those in authority, not to be rebellious. Uh, that in our workplace, in that context in that day, he's talking to slaves and masters, and he's talking, particularly talking to slaves, to be submissive uh, to those in authority over them as their master. That would apply in our workplace today, that we're to be submissive, not rebellious. And then he speaks to the family, to the wife, and the husband as well, and uh, exhorts the wife to, to be submissive uh, to her husband. And that doesn't mean that she's less than, but there has to be order. Just like there's order in society, there has to be order in the home as well. And so he exhorts that, and he exhorts our, uh, us as husbands to be, um, to be loving and tender and gentle and patient and kind, to our wives, and then he uh, picks up in verse 8 where he says, finally, all of you, now I, I kind of joke with this, he says, finally, it's kind of like me on a Sunday morning say, saying finally, and you know I'm going to go 20 more minutes, well Peter goes three more chapters in this, but he says, finally, in, in relation to that, here, he's going to tell us, here's how the things that, that need to work in our hearts so that we can have these types of right relationship. Um, it's impossible to have right relationship and fellowship where the heart is not right. And he's going to exhort us to certain things, heart conditions, if you will, heart uh, status, heart positions that we need to have in order to be in right relationship and to be in right relationship with each other. You remember Jesus said that all of the commands can be summed up in these two commands, to love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And there it is, again, that horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical relationships, our fellowship and relationship with God and our fellowship with others. And so in order to have right fellowship with each other, she says, finally, brothers, have unity of mind. Um... Some translations say, be in harmony with one another. And if you're musically inclined, you know that uh, there are certain steps in a music um, staff where you would sing a note that's complementary or in harmony to the lead note. And if you're not singing the right harmony note, it sounds horrible. And so here he says, to be in unity. Now, when we think about unity, unity doesn't mean uniformity, but there's there's a unity, there's a harmony with one another. And there is room for, uh, for disagreement. There is room for um, other way, views of ways of doing things or how you might do things. But in that, be in unity and be in harmony in that. In other words, don't be fighting over your preferences. Uh, I think about that in my in my in my home, um, man, Sandy and I both have preferences. And the longer we're married, the more we realize how different some of those preferences are. Well, if I insisted or if she insisted, and she usually insists and I yield to her preferences, except for the kitchen towel. I never can figure out which one's the right one to use on what area of the kitchen. And she changes that every now and then just to throw me off. I'm sure of that. But if we were always bickering over our differences, my goodness, there would just be absolute disharmony in our home. And so it's the same in every fellowship, in the church in particular. If we're bickering about our preferences, then there's not going to be harmony. Um, it calls us to yield to one another. The Bible says that consider others better than yourselves. That's not easy for me to do. I consider myself better than others, and so do you at times. But it takes a yielding and a submitting to one another. So he says, live in unity. There's, there's the one thing that we have absolute unity in, and that is that, that God is God. There's no other way to salvation except through Jesus Christ. He has saved us unto eternity, and he's given us a mission to do. That's the baseline of the gospel and the unity that we should have in mind. How we do that, we may have preferences, we may have differences, but at the end of the day, that doesn't matter. 
What matters is that we have unity of heart and mind to magnify and bring glory to the name of Jesus by bringing others to him and making disciples of him. So it says, have unity of mind, have sympathy, be sympathetic with one another. You know, I'm reminded that I, 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 we never know what somebody else is going through. And life is hard. Life is filled with complications. Life is filled with disappointments. Life is filled with distress. And it takes uh, intentional effort on our part to try to understand and know what each of us are going through. And then when we know and understand, it can cause us to have more sympathy for that person in their situation. Sometimes we're so focused on our circumstances that we think we're the only ones in the world that have problems. That's just not true. Every one of us have problems. And so we have to take time in relationship with one another to find out where each other is. It may be emotional situation. It may be a physical situation. It may be a financial situation. It just may be a bad day. But if we have grace with one another, it, encourage, it helps us to be sympathetic with one another in our relationships. Have brotherly love, love unconditionally, outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Have a tender heart. Boy, think about that one. A tender heart. What does that mean? It goes along with being sympathetic. Having a tender heart towards one another. Um, considering others better than ourselves. Setting our own selves aside, if you will, for the sake of others. Isn't that what Christ did? Philippians chapter 2 tells us that though he were God, he did not consider equality with God something to be held onto or grasped, but he humbled himself and became obedient. Why? For our sake. And so that's what he calls us to do, and we can only do it by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And have a humble mind meaning recognize that none of us are perfect. Humility. Humility is, is saying, you know, I, I'm broken, I'm flawed, I know that, I understand that, I don't excuse that. Uh, but I, we recognize that we're all flawed and we're all marred. And we don't think ourselves more highly than others. In other words, we don't have a haughty spirit. There's a lack of arrogance there. And so he says, have humility with one another and do not repay evil with evil or reviling with reviling or insults would be uh, another translation of that word. Don't repay insult. You know, when my kids were, were growing up and they would get in a scuffle with one another, um, a fight with each other, I would go to correct them. And, and the, the, the one that started it, uh, um, to me, was probably most at blame. But the other one was just as guilty because they would respond in the same likeness that the one initiated. And it would always be, well, he said so-and-so, or he did so-and-so, or she said so-and-so, and she did so-and-so. And my response to the other one would be, I understand he or she did that to you, but I'm not getting onto you for that. I'm I'm correcting you for your response to them because you acted in the same way. You see, saying that somebody else did it to me and that's why I did it to them is no excuse before God. We're accountable for our reactions and our response as well. And God, by the Holy Spirit, has empowered us to come in the opposite spirit when evil is done against us or when insults are hurled at us. And um, so that's what he's called us to. Why? That brings harmony in relationship. That brings fellowship. Then he goes on to say, uh, For to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. And then wrapping this up in verse, verses 10 to 12, he quotes Psalm 34 to tell us that these are the blessings when we walk in obedience to these attitudes of the heart. He says, Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. In other words, if you want to have, if you want to have, 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 have love, have life, and see good days, then guard your tongue, 
Hold your tongue. Bite your tongue if you have to. Don't speak evil against others. And don't be deceitful with each other. Verse 11, let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Uh, this is a way that we might have that harmony in relationship. This is a way that we might be blessed, that we turn away from evil. In other words, turn away from the temptation to to reenact evil back to the other person or rhetorical for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous that's a blessing there amen and his ears are open to their prayer the counter to that would be that god's ears are not open to the prayer of the unrighteous and so if we want to keep a an unhindered relationship or fellowship with god and that he might hear our prayers then we need to be mindful of our horizontal fellowship with each other. Otherwise, God is not going to hear our prayers. He, he clearly states it here. He'll shut off until we get right with him. But the face of the Lord, he says, is against those who do evil. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you, that his face would shine upon you. You'd have a great day today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Remember, be intentional and pray that God would give you an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart today. That God would give you opportunity to cultivate a seed that's already been planted there. And if God, by his grace, he would allow us to witness him saving somebody today. Let's make that our prayer today as we go about our day. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Where we'll pick up again, uh, I think, in First Peter chapter 3. Have a great day.